In the early 1880s, Giovanni Boldini felt the need to expand his Parisian repertoire to include subjects that were distinctly contemporary, capable of transmitting the pulse of city life and capturing its most significant moments. He was mainly interested in places that he had, until that period, rarely painted or portrayed without going into them in depth, but toward the end of the 19th century he began depicting the city's nightlife. Boldini painted musicians, dancers, singers, and any people in the public that he identified as embodiments of elegance in their relaxed movement between restaurants, café chantant, and music halls. The instantaneousness with which all these figures appear is unique. They are surprising figures in their lines, colors, attitudes, and expressions, but their immediacy has nothing whatsoever photographic about it. Here art flows and filters through life. These works demonstrate Boldini's knowledge of contemporary avant-garde figurative debates, and they owe a great deal to his relations with Impressionist painters, and in particular with Edgar Degas. Their friendship intensified from this period on. He shared with the French artists not only the evenings at the theatre, but also the formal and stylistic investigation of the themes of the modern city. They both prefer artificially lit interior scenes, raised viewpoints, a taste for uninhibited poses, and multiple perspectives. And these similar interests and approaches are identifiable, in part, in the production of both artists throughout and even beyond the 1880s. The musical theme, or portrait in music, is addressed by the artist in numerous compositions, where the comparison with Degas is proposed in an ironic key, so to speak. This is the case of the piano lesson, dated 1886, where Boldini contrasts the blatant, almost hyperbolic gesture of the young sleepy singer, so light in body as to be reduced to an arcane presence, with a severity fixed by the elderly pianist, all concentrated in the musical exercise. They seem to be an exasperated, almost caricatured quotation of the movement depicted by his French colleague in La Prova di Canto, voice lesson of 1872. At other times, the Ferrara composer also made use of his friend's famous cuts, which led him, for example, to deprive his young pianist of his hands in 1884, just as surprising as Manet, who listened to his wife at Degas piano in 1868. Boldini then sometimes adopts a dynamic point of view animated by unstable, whirling perspectives that condense into strongly vertical or horizontal spaces. Sometimes he also resorts to metonymy as an element capable of initiating a movement that, starting from the eye of the beholder, involves the observed object in a temporal dimension. Two Young Women on the Piano is perhaps the most significant work in this sense. The particular raised point of view, in this case, captures two young girls in the act of intoning a four-handed symphony at the piano. Despite the mimic quality of the faces, the image seems to be a direct take of the most fertile and germinal moment of a musician's work, the rehearsal of a concert. The particular cut of the frame, on three sides, also invites the spectator inside the action. The tapered hands of the pianists move quickly on the piano keyboard, from which the rhythmic sequence of the music's time is derived, with a play of segmented lines that suggest openings of space beyond the frame. All this is embellished by a painting with preemptory tones and burnt colors, now free to go beyond the limits of pure visibility and replace it with a disposition of fervent sensualism, a celebration of enjoyment, a sensitivity that is more available than ever to any solicitation given birth by the female figure. The result is a compendium of fertility and ease, of gravity and synthesis, that places Boldini at the center of decadent thought, 
his aversion to the ideals and methods of naturalism, here touch such an extreme limit that they are comparable to the extremes of Jean de Zessin, the hero protagonist of the novel Against the Grain, written in 1884 by Yuri Carl Wismont.